Just like we did for Bessel functions, at this point in time, we're going to completely forget about the differential equation, about Hermit's differential equation, and we're going to define the Hermit polynomials in a completely different way by using a generating function. And a generating function, as usual, is a function of two arguments, x and t. And in case of Hermit polynomials, it's an exponential, but this time exponential minus t squared plus 2tx. And what are we going to do? We're going to expand that generating function in the Laurent series. So we're going to write that as a sum of powers of t. Um, now, but here you see there's no singularity here. This is a nicely well-behaved function. So there's no negative powers of t in our series expansion. So the sum goes from n equal to 0 to infinity. The expansion coefficient will obviously depend on x, but rather than calling that expansion coefficient just a sub n, we're going to call that expansion coefficient uh, h sub n. So this is the Hermit polynomial of order n. It's defined this way by using this uh, expansion in the Laurent series. There's a small cosmetic change that we introduce, and that's that we're going to divide this thing by n factorial. And if we do that, that will result in uh, Hermit polynomials with nice integer uh, coefficients. Okay. And again, just like before, this is a purely mathematical trick. Don't try to think that there's anything physical behind that t represents time or something like that. This is a purely mathematical trick. It's a different way to define the Hermit polynomials. But later on, we'll be seeing that uh, both the definition in terms of generating function and the definition in terms of the differential equation, they are uh, equivalent. By the way, don't confuse uh, hn with hn1. The thing on the left is a Hermit polynomial. The thing on the right is a Henkel function of the first kind. The, the difference, of course, is this, uh, this superscript here. Okay, that's just a notational thing to be aware of. Now that we have this particular alternative definition of our Hermit polynomials, uh, we can actually also expand the generating function as a sum, as a series, and then come up with a series expansion for the Hermit polynomials themselves. And that's the subject of another exercise video, but if you just summarize the results here, you can conclude that the Hermit polynomials are a finite sum in this case, so it's a sum over a finite number of terms, otherwise it wouldn't be a polynomial minus 1 to the power of r, 2x to the power n minus 2r, and then we throw in some factorials for good measure, n minus 2r factorial, r factorial. Okay, so let's see a different video for this, uh, this derivation. Once you have this formula, then you can figure out that the uh, Hermit polynomial of the zeroth order is just a constant. If you go to the first order Hermit polynomial, that turns out to be 2x. The second order Hermit polynomial is 4x squared minus 2, and so on and so forth. So using this formula, you can actually calculate all Hermit polynomials.